When I first made my own money, I was only focused on my music, not my business. So I've had smashes that on the back end paid out crumbs. For example, Big Sean, Dance Ass, the sample took half of that, man. MC Hammer, you ain't had to do me like that, man. You ain't had to do me like that. Rihanna's birthday cake went from an interlude on her album to a remix with Chris Brown that to this day is still not available on DSPs and has never been sold. So I remember one day asking the dream, how much money didn't we make off a record that went number one that we couldn't sell? And he was like, oh man, you know, nothing crazy, like three or four million. Three or four million, rich talk, man. And lastly, Anaconda had a sample, a co-producer, who had a ghost producer. And of course I had to split what was left with my partner too. Um, so after going through all that, I wouldn't ever think about selling my publishing. But for people in the industry, one of the biggest stories right now is No ID selling his catalog. Um, his publishing, what, 273 songs with everybody from Jay-Z, Drake, Kanye. Um, for me, when I think about the long-term effect of selling my intellectual property, I don't think that would be the path for me. You know what I mean? I don't even think that my publishing is belongs to me. It belongs to my children. Um, this morning, Joe Budden went off on Charlemagne uh, on the topic of ownership. Do we have that clip? The masterpiece, mm -hmm. the Kanye's, mm -hmm. all of the people that had to change status quo to come back and show us how to do it. But they have to speak in codes just like they fucking had to do in the slave days. Master P, you have been a genius with your music empire. Tell me what you think about IP, intellectual property, and light of no IDs, recent sale of the catalog. How should we best manage our IP? And how would you start No Limit if you had to do it today, given that we can't even go on tour right now? Yeah, well, I think people have to realize being an entrepreneur is not for everybody. Everybody right. is not willing to do so. I can understand. Everybody is different. If you don't have the same drive me and Dame have, this is not for you because everybody is not going to get up and make sure everybody get paid and then they go with nothing. Like there's a lot of times that I went with nothing. So I understand some of these guys, if you really, is that not for you, you you're going to, and I think our problem is everybody keep talking 400 years, you know, slavery ago, but we got to get off of that. That was 400 years ago. That's why we behind. How do we change that? With success. Because they already 400 years past us. And we keep going back to that. So my thing is ownership is important. But you got to realize, and Dame could tell you this too, that we have a lot of business that we have that the end goal is to sell it. And just like all these other big companies, the end goal is to build business up and to sell it. How do you get off it? Some people want to keep their business forever. Is that smart? It all depends what type of businessman you are. Like mm -hmm. for me, if I could take something and control the marketing of it, I don't mind selling it because then I still control the narrative. My mm -hmm. friend, you can't count my pockets by the friends I have and the, the money that we have because if you could count it, you really don't have it. How you look at where we are is the checks that we could write and give back because that's the difference. So if you know you're not at that level, you're still working. You're still trying to get there. And I think that this is not for everybody. I mean, if I had to do the music business right now, I would focus on the marketing side of, the marketing side of this to where if I could build this on my own, then I could make billions. I made millions, hundreds of millions. But right now, if you get a real hit record and you own it, imagine the money that you can make, the communities that you can change. Because a lot of the artists now with these 360 deals, they're getting pennies on the dollar. Right. With the music they putting out because nobody has the patience to say, mm. I'm already big. Most artists get signed. I mean, look at uh, what the guy that made the song um, uh, the, from New York to where where this song was so big, the Panda record went so big. Oh, uh, Designer. Designer was already big when that record was blowing up. He went and got that record from somebody online. So think about it. If you take something like that, I don't, I don't care what record it is that you know that's going to go international. 
If you could hold on to that, you need to hold on as long as you can because once you sign that deal, you have no more control. And that's what people mm. don't realize. You're only signing a deal for the upfront money. And when you get the upfront money, all you're doing is paying bills. Mm. And that's why, so that's why you guys talked about earlier. They'll put you in the house, give you the car you want. And then when it go cold, nobody talk to you no more. Then you go so, back to the hood. So let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, right? I'm in the hood right now. Yeah. I got the hood going crazy. You yeah. know, uh, I'm a local superstar. Everybody knows that I'm next to blow. If I want to take my career to the next level, what terms specifically, what does it, what, what should a deal even look like? What should I be asking for? I just had somebody um, tell me, yo, coach, you know, joint venture time, bro. You got hits. You got people that I, I know some of the homies that Why don't not, even produce. Let me, let me tell you this. Why mm -hmm. not ask for nothing? Mm. Why not ask mm. for nothing? I did that in the 90s. When I signed a distribution deal, I asked for nothing. That was the only mm. way I was able to do it. And they know if somebody see that you are willing to invest some skin into your own self, invest in yourself, imagine you could get whatever deal you want, but we already come with it looking for the check in the bag. And that's mm. gonna lose it. I got, I got three guys on here who are well worse in music and maybe pop you and I'll learn together. Cause I be, you know, I'll be very honest. I don't really know he is, whatever the case is. But if, if you're saying that he sold all his stuff to a publishing house, they probably caught him early. But yeah. right now, because what P is saying, yeah, I, I'll mess with people who got distribution. If ID would have said, yo, I don't want no check in advance, but I know because you're a publishing company, you're working the angles on selling my shit to Burger King and all these kind of commercials, whatever. I don't want zero, but I want I want a 70, 30 split, 70 my side, 30 split. You go and shop and be my whore. Go out there and sell my shit. Yeah. Church. No, you ain't got to work. The money you got to recoup because it's nothing to recoup. It's <laughs> nothing to recoup. All of it's cream. Yes. Mm. Understand? You need distribution outlets. You see what I'm saying? Like in 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 product categories. Yeah. And you could have made much more. That's exactly what I did with Samsung. They offered me a lot of money. I was like, no. Let's. I want to split. I want you to split this, and I want you to finance everything. I'm going to do the marketing and the branding. You're going to manufacture it, and then I'm going to pay you for that aspect. And I get the rest. And that's why I got one of the biggest deals that's ever been made in the fashion business because of that. Wow. So think know. about it, right? Well, These companies don't need money. They don't need nothing. They, they want you. They want the talent. And I tell right. people all the time, product outweighs talent. So like Dame said, once you get something big, then now you can invest that into product, other things that you want. But if you just go for the check. I'm the first guy to turn down a million dollars from Jimmy Iovine, which everybody else in the 90s wanted a deal. Mm. And I only had $500 in my pocket at the time. I think Ooh. as African-Americans, we just want the check. We want to say we got this million dollar check and you're going back to the hood. So now you're being controlled on that way. You've been mm. controlled all the way your career. They're going to tell you when you can put your music out, what you can't do, all these different things. But imagine if you kept the control. That's what Damon just telling you. If you went in there wanting nothing, and they right. still want you, and they're gonna put you through all their distribution system. Because even for us, with product, it's all about getting shelving space. It's all about uh, getting our stuff into the marketplace. Mm -hmm. If they ain't got to give you no big check, they don't mind saying, "Okay, I'll give you seventy percent of this, and we'll take 30. And, right. And if you can wait for your money, but we can't wait for our fuck money. Fuck that advance. Yeah. My my takeaway from this is fuck that advance. See? Fuck that advance. But think about it as. As people that look like us, we want to come back to the hood and shine right quick. So that's where we mm. losing the control because we want to go buy the diamonds, the jewels and, and fake it till we make it. We don't need to do that because if you have your business straight, it's like a basketball player. You need to know your business, learn your business. Are they going to play you the whole while you in the game? And so music, to be honest with you, once you get a hot record, they'll do anything for you until they sign you. So my thing is knowing your power. You could ask for whatever you want until you sign them papers. Once you sign them papers, it's over with. Can I, do mm. I got to tell your story? Yeah. Yeah, jump in, jump in. I hate to say it. And then uh, Envy, I want you to jump in too. But. I had to do it in reverse. Right around 2002, football was white hot. I asked one or two rappers, I said, listen, you know, cause I was always sponsoring the videos. They need the extra $20,000 for the extra girls and cars, whatever cases. I was like, yo, I got $20,000 every video you're gonna do just to give you extra. They were like, nah, I don't want that because they felt that it was gonna go right to the girls and cars. That's what they wanted, the director wanted. I said, no problem. Three separate rappers, I said to all of them, listen, 
for the next year, you're going to have a Bentley to drive in New York whenever you got here. I rented one Bentley. It cost me $5,000 a month, a total of $60,000. And I got $400,000 worth of placements of what I would have gotten just by having that Bentley rented for them to drive around when they got to New York. And they were the ones who said, yo, just give me a call. That's how fucked up it was. <laughs> Damn. And, and then get mad at you in the end. <laughs> <laughs> so look, let me tell y'all something. Product do not talk back. That's why I got in the product business. <laughs> I, got the, I got the rice right here, don't talk back. <laughs> I don't need to be worried about what I can't do for an artist when I could go make more money selling product and don't have the headaches because everybody don't have the patience. To be the rice don't talk back. You, you just don't. kill me with that. <laughs> no. Product don't talk back. The rice Think don't about talk it. back. I'm, I'm in a product business. I'm out of the, the talent business where I have to manage talent. Right. To me, when you sell in product, you don't have to deal with all the negative stuff that you normally would have to deal with because a lot of the artists are uneducated. Like Dame say, when you're trying to help them and show them something, they don't even want to hear that. They just want to know Here's what I want. Bag on the side, Pookie, you need the brown bag on the side. Them to sling, sling, sling cereal. You don't, you don't got that in your, in yeah. your world. Yeah. Mm. Mm. All, right. and we, all we do is promote other people's product, and we don't have none of our own. Mm, powerful. Look, we got to run the break, man. Jim, Jim, the rice don't talk back. Fuck the advance. I'm eating right now. We'll be right I'm back drinking, with more. I'm drinking Jizz Hoop water. We ain't <laughs> hey, drinking water. Hold on, turn, hold on, turn to the side so we can see that front. That Jizz Hoop. Is. This, this the water that cares, <laughs> that gives back. <laughs> there it is. We'll be right back with more Kings of Cosine.